Huh, would you look at that? Awesome. Excuse me, would you mind telling me what this says? Yes, can you see it properly? Go ahead and read it out. Well, I don't even know why you're trying. I can't even hear you. I'm only doing this so I can get my doctor's degree because Toon doesn't pay me enough. And when I asked him for better lighting, he just burned a stack of money in my face. Well, besides my crippling depression, let's take another look at the dummy Slappy and see what he's up to in tonight's episode. Here's your light. Oh, how I hate you. Hey there, guys. We're back at it again with Night of Living Dummy 3. And Slappy's back for revenge with a completely different family that wasn't even in the last episode. But there's two dummies now, so let's have fun. So we get an introduction from a puppet with a boulder of a mole on his head while the older version of David Wayne appears in my soul. So the little girl hears a noise from upstairs, so she goes ahead and starts to investigate. What is it? Oh my god! Oh wait, it's just a puppy that's not that bad. But she thinks it's her little brother messing around with her, but he steps into the room. So who is it? Uh, I said, who is it? Yeah, c come on, I already said it wasn't you. Let's hurry this around. So at first they're scared by this, but then immediately breaks attention by figuring out it's their dad right away. And I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure his face was a lot more blown up than that. So it just magically fixes itself, and the little girl notices, but the dad is kind of dumb because he thinks he fixed a giant crack that obviously was still there right after he'd done it. So then the episode makes us think that Slappy cut off his finger when clearly he's sitting over there, but no, it's just the dad being a dick. So then the kids are treated to some bad news, hearing that their annoying cousin is going to be staying over for a while. And to their credit, he actually is... No, wait, stop everything! Hey, stop! Cut! He looks familiar. <laughs> Liar! You're with him! You brought him here to kill me! You turned her against me! You will not take her from me! I do not fear the dark side as you do. I'm freeze, we can continue. So Anakin's gonna stay with them for a couple days, but he's kinda scared of everything. So that really makes him annoying and they don't like him very much for that. So of course, he's gonna be spooked by Slappy, which leads to a very creative prank. Uh, I did say prank, right? Uh, wait, oh my god, look out! Oh no! Uh, uh, got him. Ooh. All right, that doesn't really happen. If it did, it'd probably be a lot more interesting. But what really did happen is that Slappy just propped up the old mafia dummy in front of him. And of course, they're not gonna think the dummy did it. So the kids get blamed for it. And obviously, either one of them's not gonna say they did it. So it's off to the whipping chamber. I'm just kidding. They just make them sweep the stairs. But Anakin feels bad, so he's gonna try to apologize and make amends. And together you and I can rule the galaxy. Make things the way we want them to be. So Zane has this thing where he likes to take pictures, and somehow he got a red room in their house right away. But something's off again. That's me. But who's that? Thanks a lot, you guys. Zane? No, really, thanks a lot! Uh, sub for sub? I hate you! So the dad's trying to make Anakin not so afraid of Slappy, and I guess you can say that's a tender family moment, until it all gets ruined when they go to the family table and see that all the food's been destroyed. So, of course the kids get blamed for it again, but you gotta wonder, why don't they ever blame it on Anakin? I mean, I know he's the wimpy house guest, but still, he can't be to blame at all? Well, he is. Turns out he was for the dark side after all. Huh. So I guess he's always been an asshole. I pledge myself. I will not betray the Republic. My loyalties lie with the Chancellor. And with the Senate. And with you. 
I don't know. Many Jedi have been killed. Have faith, my love. What things? So the kid pops out and tells Anakin that he's been bad. So they go downstairs and Slappy finally does something. <laughs> well, let me show you how the pros do it. <laughs> Except, I do hate to work alone. <laughs> So Slappy brings the Mafia puppet to life with his stank breath attack? Huh, I wonder. So the parents decide to make Anakin work the fields, and I guess a little bit of child backbreaking labor puts them in the mood, so they decide to go out for the night. I'm shocked these parents don't have a torture chamber. Don't mind us, we're just plotting to kill your kids. Did you hear what that dummy said? I don't care. So they're actually getting along and everything's going swell when the girl walks into the kitchen and sees that there's puppets all over the place again. But Anakin really says he didn't do it this time. So then they see Slappy just sitting there and I swear to God if it wasn't more than common sense to run out of the freaking room after you see that, then I don't know. I guess I'm just dumb, right? So Anakin gains a little bit of bravery and goes and tries to taunt Slappy, trying to get him to move. Or I guess just mocking him, or mocking the kids, really. This is for the prequels! <laughs> so Slappy proceeds to chase the kids around the room, terrifying them. But in the next scene, they have him on the floor grappled down. Wow, how intimidating. Hmm. I sure wish that he had summoned to life another puppet to help him out, but I guess not, right? So the kids go to bed after a demonic puppet attack, as you do. When they come to realize that Slappy didn't stay in that sewer thingy, or whatever it's called. Well anyways, he puts his breath into Anakin, turning him into a puppet as well. So seriously, he could just do that now, I guess. Well anyways, he tries to get the Mafia puppet to strangle the kids to death, or whatever, but he doesn't want to do that. So he starts to attack Slappy, cause it's all about the family. So he throws him out the window. So Slappy is destroyed, the Mafia dummy goes back to not being alive, and the cousin goes back to normal again, so all seems well. I'll be seeing you real soon. To be fair, that head turning effect wasn't so great even if I did have it on full screen. Okay, so quick summary. The episode itself actually does keep you entertained, and the guy in the Slappy suit actually did convince me as a child. The effects were pretty great on that. So all in all, give it a watch if you really do want to see something cool this Halloween. Oh, you gotta help me, Doc. I think I'm going insane. Toon wants me to be watching all these movies and games for the rest of October, and I don't think I can cut it. I mean, my show is from the 90s, but come on! Oh, so when's the next episode? You're kidding, right?